I always wanted to move to New York City. I just know I can be a writer. This is going to change everything. I can't be myself here. My family is shocked. Allison, you'll be back in three months. I step off the plane at JFK. What have I done? Everything about this city is so intimidating. I'm rooming with Rosala, an executive assistant by day, goth dominatrix by night. <laughs> There's a stripper pole in our living room, <laughs> but the rent is cheap. I work as a freelance publicist. It may not be my dream job, but at least I'm writing. Six months later, the recession hits, and I lose my job. My sister Stacy, she thinks I'm living some sex in the city lifestyle. If she only knew. There's no food in my cupboards. I'm racking up credit card debt. I can't believe I have to cash out my 401k. Everything is falling apart, including the pull-out couch. But moving back home, that is not an option. I have to make this work for me. Thank God, several months later, that recruiter calls. Can you start on Monday? From my high-rise office building, I watch the snow fall, and I put my writing dream to bed. I work at one of the biggest advertising agencies in the world, surrounded by smart, accomplished people. Do I really deserve to be here? It's kind of thrilling at first, working late nights, ordering dinner in, and taking town cars home. I wear this black jumper and fascinator to the office holiday party. As I walk into Cipriani's, I admire its stone pillars and I grab a glass of champagne and a mini beef tartare. But I'm squashing my writing impulses. What's the point? There's no time and it doesn't pay off my debt. Now I'm chronically flirting with men at work. I find the most unavailable ones, like Bob. He's funny, successful, gorgeous, but he still sleeps with his ex-wife. When I do manage to write, I stuff my notes in a wicker basket and I shove them in a closet. Sunday nights are the worst. I have terrible insomnia. Diane, my career coach, says, Allison, what are you working so hard to avoid? I hate what she's saying because deep down, I know she's right. I can't commit to anything, not pictures on a wall, not words on a page. Every morning, I pass Andrew's Coffee Shop on 35th and 7th. The Helvetica font on the awning taunts me. I fantasize about sitting in one of those brown booths and banging out my screenplay, but I never do it. Then one intimate night with my coworker George, a moody Scottish poet, I discover a dark family truth that I had fought hard to forget. And in that moment, I realized that I have never felt safe to be the real me. Now is the time to start my journey back to wholeness. I begin talk therapy and I find refuge in a local yoga studio. I even train to become a yoga teacher. And one day, I get the courage to pull out that wicker basket full of notebooks. Wait, why have I been avoiding this? There's some really good stuff in here. A screenplay for sure, maybe even a novel. I start writing again, at least 15 minutes a day, before work. 
I feel so alive. And that's when I meet Richard at the train station. He's a creative writer just like me, a true diamond in the rough. We talk for hours on our first date at the Orange Squirrel. They have to kick us out of the restaurant. Richard and I just bought our first house together, and we are making it a home. And sometimes I find it hard to say our home, but I'm working on it. The other day, Richard was playing guitar, and I was singing Back on the Chain Gang by The Pretenders. Creativity has a space in our home, and it has a place in my life. And I am finally living the life that I had always imagined. <laughs>